everyone. Welcome back to the channel. It's Lauren. Thank you so much for being here today. I'm really excited. We're going to just walk down memory freaking lane and we're going to talk about some old, potentially forgotten, kind of weird makeup collabs that have happened in the past. I've been watching beauty YouTube since like 2012. So I really tried to maybe do, I don't know, I feel like go in depth a little bit more, slightly more obscure or just weird. Some of them I'm just like, this was weird, wasn't it? And more than anything, I hope it just like brings you back to memory lane. I think it's fun to see what's happened in the past. And I think for almost all of these, I didn't buy them. And obviously I'm gonna talk about each one at length. But yeah, I kinda don't wanna have like this long ass intro, so let's just get into the palettes. Well, I think most of them are palettes, uh, but we'll get into the products. And I would love to hear any of your thoughts and opinions, of course, on them. But yeah, let's get into it. All right, so we have to start off with Jaclyn Hill's collection lab with Morphe. And no, I'm not talking about this palette. I'm not talking about the vault collection. And no, I'm not talking about the second collab. I am talking about the original, the original Morphe collaboration with Jaclyn Hill in the black packaging. Cla like this is like classic, classic Morphe. Let me know if you were here when this came out. I remember it. I, I did want it at the time, but I didn't pick it up. One of the reasons I wanted to start with this palette is because I really feel like for my memory, really seeing people collab with brands like big influencers started in my memory with Jacqueline in a lot of ways so she had like a lot of opportunities we had the Becca opportunities later on those trends were kind of started in that way or at least that's what I remember really kind of kicking off and then kind of from there an avalanche of that has happened and has continued to happen so this palette I I mean it's Morphe style right like it's a big 35 palette and this one has more of those like purples there is still like a green in there lots of neutrals but this was the original the original Jaclyn Hill collaboration with Morphe looking at this and like wanting to edit it down like if that were to happen and we kind of kick out some of those boring shades I think that this could be actually kind of a pretty color story almost I call literally if you put greens and effing purples together I'm like secret garden <laughs> it's the secret fucking garden palette yeah that's what I get from this plus a gold or something I don't know I don't hate this palette and I think it almost ends up which some of these I was doing obviously the research for this looking at the different palettes and I hadn't seen them in a long time and it's pretty Mm, interesting to see what was so coveted oh my gosh back in the day to now and then I'm like oh my gosh the stuff that's coming out now is gonna be like when we look at it later I know it I just know it but anyway first collab Jaclyn Hill Morphe palette oh my gosh there's this picture online where it has like Jaclyn's face in the background and it's just like it just brings you back man I would love to know of course if you had any of these I'd love to know. I have kind of a few different collabs with Morphe. I don't know if we should continue on. Yeah, let's let's do Morphe for a second. Next, I wanna talk about something that was a little bit more recent. So this one's not super forgotten, but honestly, I kinda of think it's kinda of weird. This is the Morphe and Manny MUA Glam Palette. I am just like, why? Why, Manny? Because you got like a whole line going on. Lunar Beauty, honestly, I think has really done a great job with the releases that they've been coming out with, kind of the vision of their palettes. Like, I really have enjoyed seeing what's coming out from the brand. I'm excited when launches happen. Although I haven't dipped my toe in yet. I'm still like waiting for that perfect palette, which honestly probably is the freaking Moonspell palette. I probably should just buy that. But anyway, this little glam palette, what the... This is just strange. Why did they come out with this? We'll get more into the conversation and kind of the idea of like a brand or someone who has a brand collabing with a different brand, but not as like brands, but as like the influencer. It's kind of strange to me because you have the resources and you have the ability to make your visions come to life because you have a brand that you run, that you create products with. So why would you not take the time and really, you know, create that vision with your own brand? I just always am like, but why? And I just don't understand the back end on it. Obviously, I think that there is a reason, right? Like, I don't think people are out here doing things for no reasons. I just don't know what those reasons are. So if you have some insight into that, of course, let me know in the comments. But I guess what I take away with at the end of the day, though, is like, if you didn't want to do it with your brand, why is this really your vision? 
like come out and say it with your chest and put your freaking actual brand name on it and let's see what happens. I don't know, kind of have some of those questions, but looking at the palette, it's kind of basic. It's also not in Morphe style, which part of me, I mean, I can appreciate something a little bit different, but also I feel like at least if you're gonna collab with Morphe, maybe do a Morphe palette, but it's your version of it. But really, I just thought this was such a strange collab. I didn't really see much promo for it. I think it ended up being in a BoxyCharm, which maybe that's the back end on it, right? Maybe they created a palette to Together to then sell to BoxyCharm and that was probably really lucrative. I don't know, maybe that was the end game in the whole thing, right? Uh, not sure. It is quite cheap. Obviously Manny's brand's a little bit more expensive so maybe they were trying to come out with like a more inexpensive option. I'm just not sure. It's just lacking vision. I think that's overall it. If this came out the gate with more vision, I think I'd understand it a little bit more. But yeah, just a weird, just a weird collab at the time that it came out, all that. I was just like, Scratching my head. Left scratching my head. All right, let's continue talking about Manny's palettes. This is one that really, I mean, hits me in the feels. The Makeup Geek and Manny MUA palette. I just remember this being such an anticipated launch. I don't know why I didn't buy this one because I could see so much of me wanting it at the time. It was kind of expensive, $45 for a nine pan palette. And it's basically like neutrals. I think it had like classic shades from the line kind of in the palette with a few new ones. I think that's how it went. But really just everything about this just encapsulates like when people used to go to iMats still. And, and like me being so excited to try to go to iMats, that was like the one thing I wanted to do. <laughs> <laughs> so badly. I don't know. Uh, it also reminds me of when red shadows like that were really hard to find and really were the it color like the redder the better and like progressively shadows kept getting more and more warm and red and this had like you know something that felt really unique at the time. It also had that kind of blue brown pigment pressed in there which was just like so cool and different. Looking at it now like from my lens now it's a little neutral for me personally um, and I'm so excited that we have so many beautiful multi-crumbs and all this stuff like I, I love the shimmer and all all the leaps and bounds we've made in makeup but man was this a popular palette. Part of me is a little sad I didn't pick this one up. I kind of wish I did. Next let's talk about another Makeup Geek palette. This is from Kathleen Lights and this is a highlighter palette. This is another one I didn't pick up but I remember being really excited for this launch like before. I think there was like a little bit of hype before but then actually seeing the colors I was like oh I I don't know if I'm gonna like that so I didn't pick it up. Looking at these swatches though I'm like it looks really pretty. <laughs> it looks super pretty. I specifically Specifically, like in my head can remember the imprint of the Makeup Geek highlighters that kind of like geometric I don't know why that's something that just sticks with me <laughs> I'd love to know if you picked this palette up I feel like at the time as well like highlighter palettes were a little bit something different I guess to do as a collab a lot of people were doing palettes and so this was something I feel like I don't know when she announced what it was I felt a little bit like oh that's what they're coming out with but yeah didn't didn't pick that one up kind of I mean as much as I think it's pretty I will say I try really hard not to miss old makeup or really wish I had it in my life because first off makeup does go bad over time so getting something that's like four five six seven years old at this point it, it might not work as well all that stuff even if it's brand new but also there's always new stuff coming out. So it's like your new favorite highlighter might be on the horizon. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about the one you didn't get with the makeup world and how it's been going. There's always new stuff. So I try not to like get too caught up in the past of like what I haven't bought. But looking at it now, I definitely like it more than I did then. And I'm looking and someone reviewed this on YouTube in 2016. So it's a bit old. It's a bit old. The other Kathleen Lights product that I want to talk about is the Kathleen Lights and Morphe palette. I actually bought this one. Oh my gosh, I actually bought one of the things. Can you imagine? I don't know. This color story, something about it. I just, I wanted it. I thought it was really pretty. This kind of looks like the Jaclyn Hill palette, honestly, in some ways without as many purples and obviously more condensed. I think this is one of my first purchases with Morphe. I think it might've been. I thought the quality of it was pretty dang good. Like I enjoyed the palette for what it was. I did create some really pretty looks. It had those like classic kind of mustardy camely browns in there. It had some mauve colors. I don't think there's like anything wrong with this palette, especially again for the 
price, the price was like $15. I, I mean, right there, I'm answering why people might collab with Morphe even if they have their own brand because that is so cheap and that is so accessible and affordable for so many people. But for me, this one is a little weird. I guess in a lot of ways, I don't associate Kathleen with Morphe because she's so heavily associated with ColourPop to me. She's had so many different collabs with ColourPop that it's almost like, oh yeah, she did this thing with Morphe. Like I almost forget, I almost forget because I feel like everyone who is associated with Morphe is pretty heavily associated with Morphe. So whenever I remember this one, it always kind of catches me off guard. But I actually don't, I don't hate that color story still. Like I still think it's pretty. Even if it technically could be, you know, condensed down, I still think there's a lot of different looks that it offers. Let's throw it back to one of the first collabs that I can really remember. So I know I talked about Jaclyn Hill. She's the first influencer that I like knew of that was doing a collab and like kind of, I feel like started it that way. But the Too Faced and Vegas Nay palette was the first palette that I knew was like in collab with someone, but I didn't know who Vegas Nay was. And I remember wanting this palette, you guys. Everyone was talking about how amazing the quality was. I wanted it so bad. I don't know why I didn't buy it. I don't know if it was just like the price. I'm really not sure because I used to buy just like anything I wanted willy nilly. So I don't know why this one wasn't on there. Let's see. It came out in fall 2015. I bet you that's why. I moved to California in 2015, like early 2015. So I was definitely trying really hard to rein it in and I definitely didn't have a lot of money. <laughs> It was a tough first year, let me tell you. But this, for some reason, I'm looking at the color story now and I'm just like, okay, Lauren, you really wanted that thing, but I did, I really liked it. I remember people swatching it and the metallics just being so metallic and I, I just have all these memories of it and they do not match the picture that I see in front of me. I think something I'm realizing also while looking through these is that packaging really does make a difference. How things are packaged at the time when they first come out seem so brand new, but as like trends change, as like, I don't know, I don't know what changes. It starts looking really old and outdated. There's something about about it. It's almost like at the time people in the 80s got like pink tile and I don't know other 80s decor in their house. It probably looked really cool then um, but then it doesn't and it doesn't look as cool but sometimes you can reclaim stuff and kind of like make it retro looking but you know what I mean. That's kind of how I feel about the packaging which then makes the shadows in it something about them seem old whereas I wonder if a brand came out with a similar let's say color story to this but just had different packaging how that would look like different shapes in the eyeshadow pans, different spacing, not as much backspace to it. You know, all those things, how that would be received. I just wonder in my head. Anyway, this was one of the first ones, the Stardust palette. I just remember really wanting it. I did not pick it up at the time though, but I really feel like that palette was really highly received. And so when Nikki Tutorials, cause I believe the Nikki Tutorials collab came after that. When she collabed, I think everyone was really excited for that one, especially because the Vegas Nay one was such good quality. That's at least how I remember it. That one just brings me back, brings me back. Speaking of people I didn't know at the time when they collabed, but now either do, or once the palette came out, that's kind of like was my introduction to the person. The original Omrezi palette with Anastasia, not the highlighter and not the new palette, but the original like older palette, that was something that I definitely remember. I had a few of the older Anastasia palettes. They had like, the catwalk palette was like super old. They also had this one called Maya Mia. I had the lavish palette. Seriously, I think the lavish palette was so pretty. But like back in those days, right? That's when the Omrezi palette came out. I think this color story is really pretty. I'm seeing a trend here though with like purples, greens, warm browns, and like neutrals. I feel like the Jaclyn Hill palette, the Kathleen Lights palette, this palette. A lot of them seem to have those color stories. That's just like what everyone was into. I'm trying to figure out when this palette came out. I think this palette came out in 2014. Oh my gosh, that's such a long time ago, you guys. It looks kind of short and like squatty compared to the longer Anastasia palettes now, um, but very similar. I mean, they have the square pans. It's very similar actually to how, how they look. I actually like this color story still. I would love maybe different textures or something like that, but I still think this one actually <laughs> stands up, but that one definitely like throws it back. And also, you know, depending on when you got into makeup, 
makeup. You might not know that Omrizi had like a collab with ABH so far earlier than the highlighter that she did or the palette in like 2020, I think. I have like four more left to talk about. So next I wanna talk about the Morphe and Jeffree Star palette. Another Morphe palette I know, and this one's not nearly as old as some of the other ones. This was definitely one of the ones that I was just like questioning, like why is this coming out with Morphe? It just said Morphe and Jeffree Star. I don't think that it had any like different type of name to it or anything. I actually love the idea of like pinks and greens together like this. Like that's like kind of some of my ideal colors. But like I said, it just doesn't make sense to me that Jeffree Star who has a cosmetics line would make a palette with Morphe. The only thing I can think is the price, like trying to create a palette at a price that's more affordable, I guess. But I don't know, I guess I just find people collabing with brands when they have their own brands strange. I do find it strange. I don't hate the idea of brands collabing with brands, which let's get into that. The time that Too Faced and Kat Von D collaborated as brands, I actually love the idea of that. So that's like the next one. <laughs> That's the next picture here, okay. I actually kind of like the idea of that. I think it's cool, especially if brands have maybe different aesthetics, finding common ground. I think that concept can really work. Now, in the case of Too Faced and Kat Von D, I, per I didn't pick this palette up and I can see some of that effort, like darkness of the Kat Von D stuff and the light fun stuff. And they did have these cute little pouches. I think one had Clover on it and one had Kat Von D's cat on it. And I thought that was kind of cute as an idea, but I think they're just needed, we needed strong concept here. I don't think it was enough of a concept to have like a heart in half with the packaging. Like that's a start. I think that's a really great start. But when we look at what's inside this palette or this like two piece set, I don't even know. What, what do, how do we, how do we really describe this thing? Inside, I feel like we're left with way too many light colors. Like there's just not enough going on here. It's so bland and so boring for being something that should be, I think, more fun. I think it would have been fun if Too Faced did way more like pinky and girly. I don't know. I, I don't know. I wasn't in the room and I'm not like gonna redo this whole collab. Like who gives a shit? But what I'm trying to say is I think it'd be so cool to see some brands maybe collaborating together and coming out with something. I, Again, love the idea. I don't think that this was necessarily executed well with what the product actually is. And for me, that's something that's important because you can't take the idea with you. Brands do such a good job and like basically anything anyone's trying to sell you ever is selling you a fantasy, selling you a marketing idea, and they want you to feel like you're in on this thing. And I can see how buying this might feel like you're in on this collaboration between these two brands you might at the time have loved. And buying that thing makes you feel a part of it. But at the end of the day, Day, you're left with the shit and if you don't like what it is if you don't like those colors on your eyes or those don't work for you you're the one that's crying and they're laughing and they have all the money. Maybe they're not laughing, maybe they're not evil, but I'm just saying like, you're the one that's out kind of the money and they have all this. <laughs> okay, we'll move on. I hope I made my points clear. I, I think you guys get it. Okay, next on the list, I wanna talk about the Casey Holmes and the Smashbox collab. This is a highlighter palette. This was one I actually did want. I just waited on and then it was just kind of like over time, it was starting to get older and like, you know, again, new makeup's always coming out. So it just kept getting lower and lower lower on the list and then it eventually dropped off. So there was a Spotlight Pearl and a Spotlight Gold palette. And I actually really like the fact that she came out with two different palettes, like trying to cater to more skin tones. I feel like a lot of the times when you see collabs, you don't see that. And so I think that's a cool concept and definitely something like going forward, I think would be really awesome to see more of. And I think this was a really good move for Smashbox. I think before this, they really hadn't done these types of collabs. If if I'm not mistaken. I know they did like the rose stuff with Vlada later on, um, which was a really beautiful collab. I think that one really knocked it out of the park in terms of vision. I'd love to know if you guys picked this one up and how you thought of the highlighters. I think each highlighter had like a different formula. So I think some were supposed to be like shiny and metallic, whereas others were a little bit softer. I don't know, I like the concept of this. And I think overall it would age well. Like if you still had this in your collection, I could still see it being something you use. I think it would have been cool to see a little bit more vision on the packaging, but that's kind of me just being nitpicky and comparing it to things that are coming out now. So that's kind of unfair. The last kind of collab I wanna talk about isn't exactly a collab as in these palettes weren't the people associated with them's palettes. They were more part of like the marketing campaign in that way. And these are the NYX Elements palettes from 2017. I remember really wanting the Air palette, I think, but these were palettes that NYX launched in 2017, like I said. They had Alyssa Ash 
Ashley, they had Jamie Genevieve, they had Samantha Ravendahl, I Love Sarah E, Crispy, and I think the last person was Promise Tang. And they each had a different palette that they did looks with for the campaign. And I remember being kind of excited about these palettes. I thought it was cool to see different influencers that I watched have these palettes and, and be a part of this whole thing. But then the price dropped. I think for the initial like marketing, they did not let us know what the prices were, but these palettes retailed for 13 doll hairs which at the time was a lot of money I still think that $30 is a lot of money especially when I'm looking at these and they look like makeup revolution it's like <laughs> what's happening here. And I think this was like the pinnacle to me of like when I felt like drugstore pricing was just like out of control. <laughs> like drugstore needs to know its place, it needs to go back, like no. I can't even remember what the reviews are. So if you tried these, I would love to know if they were actually like of good quality. But I just remember being so turned off by the price of them. It was almost like I was protesting by not buying. I was like, mm -mm, no, mm -mm, I'm not spending $30 on NYX quality eyeshadows. Get out of here. But yeah, looking at like the promo photos with everyone I was like this is taking me back to a time man it feels like simultaneously a long time ago and also not that long ago but anyway I'd love to know your guys' thoughts on any of these collabs did you pick anything up I'm pretty sure the only thing out of all of these was the Kathleen Lights palette that's the only one that I picked up I'd love to know what you did pick up though if you like it if you still have it did it stand the test of time in your collection I hope this was like a fun walk down memory lane in the makeup world it's moving so fast it's hard to like keep track of time and when things came out and all of that but sometimes I love just like reminiscing and being nostalgic about different things in the past and also dressing like kind of like weird stuff that I'm kind of like still scratching my head about like why did that happen if there were any clubs that I didn't mention that you feel like should be on this list, leave them down below and maybe I'll do a part two. I think that'd be fun if you guys would want it, but I'm going to end it here. Thank you guys so much for being here. I hope you're having an amazing day and I will see you in the next video. Bye guys.